Welcome to a Grace Digital presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing the topic, Standing in the Gap. A lot of times there will be moments when we see sad, unfair, or even evil things happening to those who care about. And then we experience a stirring of feelings that are strong or fiery. Isaiah 59, 16 And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. We should never ignore the desire to be part of the positive change that we sense on the inside, because it means that we can stand in the gap till there is a transformation or renewal. Isaiah 62, 6-10 I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord gives yourselves no rest, and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem, and makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, Never again will I give your grain as food for your enemies, and never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. For those who harvest it will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Pass though, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations. Let's look at two major areas where we can play the important role of interceding on behalf of others, till God's will starts to become a reality. Number 1. When their marriage is under attack. Many watch their marriage break up because they feel that what they have are irreconcilable differences. But truth be told, marriage is an institution created by God and has always suffered severe attack from the beginning of creation. However, with God, all things are possible. The devil knows that the marriage between two people who have a vision, especially if they are kingdom-focused, born-again believers are a serious threat to him. How? Ecclesiastes 4, 12, AMP says, And though one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. A strong union of two persons coming together will always resist the devil, but when they are separated they cannot fight alone. The marriage union will forever be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Also, the union of two born-again believers in marriage is designed to bring forth godly children to the world which the devil hates with passion. Malachi 2, 14 and 16, AMP says, But you say, Why does he reject it? Because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your marriage companion and the wife of your covenant, made by your vows. But not one has done so who has remnant of the Spirit. And what did that one do while seeking a godly offspring? Take heed then to your spirit, and let no one deal treacherously against the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel, and him who covers his garment with wrong and violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore keep watch on your spirit, so that you do not deal treacherously with your wife. When there are regular unnecessary quarrels between a couple you know, that is not the time to join others to gossip about their challenges but to lift them up before God, so that the enemy's plot can be utterly defeated. James 5, 16-18 Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. We must be fervent on the altar of prayer for those we care about, because quarrels must not be allowed to linger for long, otherwise that may just be the end of the union. We have the God-given right to pray against every strange person attempting to come between the challenged couple. See what the Bible says in Proverbs 5, 3-8 AMP. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey like honeycomb, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end she is bitter like the extract of wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold of Sheol, 
the netherworld the place of the dead, so that she does not think seriously about the path of life. Her ways are aimless and unstable. You cannot know where her path leads. Now then, my sons, listen to me and do not depart from, forget the words of my mouth. Let your way in life be far from her, and do not go near the door of her house. Avoid even being near the places of temptation. Immoral men and women are everywhere targeting our spouses to destroy our home. But when we pray intensely, we keep them far away from our territory. We also pray for God's wisdom to come upon each person in that marriage, so that they can make the right decisions at all times, because we will not always be with them. Also, pray for wisdom for those who aren't married to prayfully make the right choice concerning marriage. Number 2. When the Church of Christ is under attack From time to time, the Church of Christ comes under attack from the forces of wickedness, and it is expected that we stand in the gap till victory is certain. If we are truly a part of this great body, we can't afford to take our eyes off the difficult arrows, being shot towards other believers or the kingdom of God. We must never act negligent or unconcerned, because what effect one part of any man's body ends up affecting other parts if it is not properly treated. Haggai 1, 2 through 9. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, The time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on your clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages, only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up in the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. The attack on the church is also referred to as persecution of the church, and even comes toward ministers of the gospel. Acts 8, 1-4, AMP says, Saul wholeheartedly approved of Stephen's death, and on that day a great and relentless persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and the believers were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles. Some devout men buried Stephen and mourned greatly over him, expressing a personal sense of loss. But Saul began ravaging the church and assaulting believers entering house after house and dragging off men and women, putting them in prison. Now those believers who had been scattered went from place to place preaching the word, the good news of salvation through Christ. We see this happen in different ways, whether physically or virtually, where those who hate Jesus and his blood-bought church. So they will put up all manner of negative stories in order to manipulate and deceive people from being followers of Jesus. Many ministers of the gospel are lied against, and this usually has a bandwagon effect on the members as well. Titus 1, 10 and 11 For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert the whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. We must not let agents of wickedness have a field day in trying to pull down the church, we must do spiritual warfare to keep these demon-influenced people with false narratives from succeeding at their evil intentions by praying passionately for Christ to keep saving men while blocking their ears to distractions from the devil. Isaiah 42, 22-25 AMP paints this picture. But this is a people despoiled and plundered. All of them are trapped in holes or are hidden away in prisons. They have become a prey with no one to rescue them, and a spoil with no one to say, Give them back. Who among you will listen to this? Who will listen and pay attention in the time to come? Who gave up Jacob, the kingdom of Judah, for spoil, and the kingdom of Israel to the plunderers? 
Was it not the Lord, he against whom we of Judah have sinned, and in whose ways they of Israel were unwilling to walk, in whose law and teaching they did not obey? Therefore he poured out on Israel the heat of his anger, and the fierceness of battle, and engulfed him in fire. Yet he did not recognize the lesson of repentance which the Assyrian conquest was intended to teach. It burned him, but he did not take it to heart. Psalms 94, 1-16, AMP O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, O God, you to whom vengeance belongs, shine forth in judgment. Rise up, O judge of the earth, give to the proud a fitting compensation. O Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked rejoice in triumph? They pour out words, speaking arrogant things, all who do evil boast proudly. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict and abuse your heritage. They kill the widow and the alien and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, The Lord does not see, nor does the God of Jacob, Israel, notice it. Consider thoughtfully, you senseless stupid ones among the people, and you dull-minded fools. When will you become wise and understand? He who made the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who instructs the nations, does he not rebuke and punish? He who teaches man knowledge? The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are a mere breath, vain, empty, futile. Blessed with wisdom and prosperity is the man whom you discipline and instruct, O Lord, and whom you teach from your law, that you may grant him power to calm himself and find peace in the days of adversity, until the pit is dug for the wicked and ungodly. For the Lord will not abandon his people, nor will he abandon his inheritance. For judgment will again be righteous, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will stand up for me against the evildoers? Who will take a stand for me against those who do wickedness? As we pray against forces that seek to scatter the flock, we should also pray for the Holy Spirit's will, to be exalted in our midst and not carnal desires. Also, we can pray for God's type of wisdom, love, and truth to become so natural in our churches. More we can pray for the right word to come from his throne, every two or more of us can gather, because only his sent and prepared word can truly transform people. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the rare privilege to be a part of your plan for those around me. I ask for your grace to never become weary as I intercede for everyone you place on my heart. Amen.